Ship Vlog, April 9, 2020. Captain Rhonda Crimes reporting from Western Australia. WA has become a veritable island. The borders are closed to all but supply vessels from the eastern states and overseas. Majority of the inhabitants are adapting, although it is still early days. Physical distancing and social isolation have now become everyday terms. The term lockdown is not associated to just prisons and penitentiaries any longer. It now describes the level of restrictions in place to mitigate the spread of COVID-19. Many people are working from home, while many, many others have been forced out of employment as businesses shut doors to comply with the mandated lockdown orders. And all of this is becoming normalised. There are still also many people going to work in essential services and some are still coming to terms with why they can put themselves at risk for work, but then they must remain at home when not working. The children are also home early for the holidays. It remains unclear just how long this at home situation will last and what the new definition of going to school will look like in a couple of weeks. So there is not a lot that qualifies for anyone's definition of what normal was anymore. Hi, I'm Rhonda Crimes. I'm a life and leadership coach supporting everyday people just like you to reflect and rework your everyday stories so you can step into the everyday leadership of your families and communities and create a compelling, meaningful and fruitful life every day. And today, let's talk about boredom being sacred. So, there are a lot of people around at the moment with a lot of time on their hands. And many of them are living together like this for the first time. Sometimes seemingly on top of each other, bound by their own piece of real estate. I had a messenger group chat with friends on Sunday and a common theme, even just from this little group, was that of boredom. And they are all still going out to work during the week. I realised that for many of these friends, and so many others, old and young alike, not being allowed to go out and find entertainment or be entertained by someone or something is a real struggle. I've always fostered the belief, and I guess it was instilled in me by my own parents, that you need to be able to entertain yourself. I was born in a wee village in the highlands of New Guinea, and so there were not a lot of Montecons. <laughs> okay, it was way back in the early 60s, so by comparison today, there were not too many Montecons in the whole world. But I reckon that foundation is what made my life so creative and fun. We made our own games. We were happy to play with others or by ourselves. I'm sure we complained at times, but I don't recall any hardship. Then fast forward to my own children growing up in the early 90s in a small wheat belt town. They did have loads of toys by comparison to me as a child. They had access to TV, to computer games and the like. But I also made sure they had creative time, crafts, Play-Doh, colouring in, bikes and skateboards. I do remember one time vividly on Boxing Day. So Santa had just been and dumped a whole pile of new delights into each of their laps just the day before. And then while I was in the laundry doing a mountain of washing, in they came to me and asked what they could do. And to every suggestion I made, they screwed up their faces and told me oh, they were bored. Now you remember last week we had that chat about the amygdala hijacks? Well, you can be certain I had one in that moment. I spun around on them and unleashed how ungrateful they were that there were so many children out there that would have been overjoyed for years to have received what this lot got from Santa. And then, 
as the cortisol wore off and my brain functioning improved, I had an epiphany. This was a moment I could use to provide a life lesson. I could provide a real life opportunity to show them what boredom actually is. So when I was calm once again, I positioned each child facing a door of a separate room in the house. I told them this was a lesson in the real meaning of boredom and they could stay like that for the next 20 minutes. No talking, just sitting looking at the door. And then I returned to the laundry. Then Ron came in from outside asking me what was going on with the kids. Clearly he may have heard something. I relayed the story and he nodded in agreement with me. Then he went inside to speak with the kids from a central point and ask them if they were bored yet. Look, it had been, you know, less than five minutes that they'd been sitting there. And yes, they all called back. He then asked, would they like to play with something now? Oh yes, and their little faces lit up with excitement. So he went to each of them and gave them one small square piece of Lego and said, there you go, have fun playing with that for the rest of the time you've got left. That was the very last time any of our children ever told us they were bored. We had reassured them at the conclusion of their penance that we had lots of doors to entertain them. We never had to do it again. The lesson was learned. They did come back later and you know, on at different times and ask us for suggestions of what they might do sometimes. But the B word was never uttered in the same sentence ever again. Now, I am not suggesting for a minute that everyone should do what we did. You do your parenting. But what I am saying is that we gave our kids a broader perspective of a term that's bandied about all too frequently and lightly. Brené Brown in her blog, Collective Vulnerability, the FFTs of Online Learning and the Sacredness of Bored Kids, and I will pop the link in to the comments, says, boredom is sacred. We shouldn't deny our children this holy experience. Now, I'd go even further to suggest that adults too will benefit from experiencing real boredom because it's from these real life experiences that creativity is born. So instead of just bitching and moaning that you're bored, brainstorm what you can do. What's been on your bucket list to try out? Play cards and board games. Sit outside in the fresh air and read a book or listen to a podcast on a topic that interests you. Do a jigsaw puzzle, make a model, bake, get crafting. Have a go at being comfortable just sitting in the same room as your family and be in relaxed silence. Set a timer and see how long you can go before someone has to break the silence. Make a list of all those jobs that you've been meaning to get to when you have time. If you're more of an active person, brainstorm ideas for substituting your usual go-to distraction. Try and make it a healthy choice. So not drinking, smoking or badgering others. This is especially important because you are a role model inside your families and the wider community. And other people will copy what you show them, not what you tell them. Choose your actions with that in mind. So if your now is not the picture you've painted for yourself and you'd like any help on this discovery path or maybe something completely different that you intuitively know or feel isn't letting your true colours shine through, please get in touch with me. You can do it really easily. Leave me a comment, send me a private message, drop me an email or click onto my Calendly booking site using the link I've provided and you can set up an obligation-free curiosity call and see if we're a good fit for each other. 
much love until next time